Welcome to Love Your Family again and again and again and again, the podcast where we focus on parenting with love and clarity. I'm Dr. Marcy, a family culture expert who for over 20 years has been helping parents to create happy and strong families. I am so excited to have Jan and Cookie here with me today to chat about their amazing family. So first, tell us about who makes up your family. All right. So uh, I'm Jan, and this is yeah. Cookie. And our son uh, is Mika. He's right now four and a half years old. And right now we live in Germany, but the background of where Mika was born and where we were born is all kind of mixed up. So Natalia uh, or Cookie is from <laughs> Colombia. And both of us met while living in Canada, which is where Mika was born. And then just a little bit over a year ago, we moved to Germany to be a bit closer to family and are now five minutes away from my parents. So in Mika's life, he has a lot of time with his grandparents now as well. So how has that changed? Because I can imagine in Canada, there were not grandparents easily accessible. Now there are. What are you seeing that's different? Well, it's uh, it's definitely fun to have an extra hand, especially because we both were self-employed and during COVID where we had to kind of juggle lots of things, it would have been really nice to have an extra person to babysit around just to support us. But I think just seeing him, like right now they're in the other room, they're painting Easter eggs, just seeing Mika connect with his grandparents is also really beautiful. I love that. And how has that helped your relationship? Because I would imagine having not the grandparent support around, you guys had less time as a couple, as adults, than you do now that you have grandparents. Have there been more date nights? No. Well, not that, Actually, not no. that many, not but that many. we were able to get out in the evening together at the same time more often than without. Yeah. Huge win. Love yeah. that. <laughs> I love that. I think that sometimes families forget how critical those parenting connections are. And we really just focus on our kiddos, but this can have, have a great impact. So I love it. And I love that in, they're in the next room making Easter eggs. I can't wait to get pictures of what the eggs end up looking like because <laughs> You know, I got Passover coming up. There are no Easter eggs in my life. So I'm excited to see your pictures. So other than time with grandparents and dying Easter eggs, what are some of the things that you love doing together as a family? Mm, what do we like? Well, for me personally, I like, um, I'm not that, I play a lot. Uh, with Mika, like um, at home, but I really like going in the bike with him out. Like he goes since his uh, little far a uh, little uh, bicycle, and then I go with him, or I just put him inside uh, of the cargo bike, and we just go for for bike rides. Uh, I really like him, and he, uh, I really like him. I like that, and he likes it too. That is fun what else we yeah do? i think that the part about you and mika going on bike trips is that he just leads where yeah where he where wanna go, go where you want to where he wants to go and you just follow along mm -hmm. so you don't really know where you're going to end up usually so for ice cream adventure <laughs> yes it's an and... ice cream adventure when you go for bike rides i like this yeah yeah yesterday we did that we were here like almost 20 degrees here yesterday Yep. <laughs> wow. And then, um, like recently, we went. We were in a hotel actually with Mika, and there was a swimming pool, and that was a very nice time to be with him. Uh, he's learning a little bit more of swimming and everything. So we were the three of us, and it was very nice seeing him and he showing us. Oh, I can go across the swimming pool. I'm like, okay. So it was fun. That was fun. The three of us. Yeah, he's he's very active. So anything that gets him like physically out 
is a lot of fun. Um, even when we're at home, he spends, I feel like, half of the time dressed as Spider-Man, jumping, oh, yes. <laughs> jumping from the couch and doing parkour in the living room. I yes, love yes. that. Are there since rules about what? He... Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, yes, yeah, since he wakes up after breakfast, oh, I'm going to put my Spider-Man suit on. I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's like every day. <laughs> It's fun. You know, training to be a superhero is quite a bit of an intense job, I hear. So he's yes. he's working it. <laughs> Are there rules of things in the house that he is not allowed to use as part of his parkour experience? Or it's just free range of, of all the things? I think as long as he doesn't break anything, as or, long as he doesn't hurt anyone. Or himself, uh, yeah. Or himself or our cat, then uh, <laughs> like we've been quite flexible with that. Fantastic. And does he often follow those rules of making sure that everything and everyone is safe while he is in his Spider-Man training? Yeah. I think when, when he's in that, that character, he is the, the friendly neighborhood <laughs> Spider-Man. Um, sure. Fantastic. <laughs> I love that you have a friendly Spider-Man, neighborhood Spider-Man for you. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So... Usually we end up chatting about some things that are tricky. And if it's not the parkour experience in your living room, what are some of the tricky moments that you have together? Mm, some tricky moments. Um, and every now and then um, it changes or there is a new theme <laughs> of changing tricky uh, things. Um, like, for example, like, he gets like mad out of nowhere and upset, but mad, very mad, like the tiger out and everything colorful. <laughs> okay. So what does he do when he's mad? Cause it comes out of nowhere. So we don't know why it's happening yet, Yeah. but what does his mad look like? Well, he puts his head down a little bit and then he's, eyes are like together how do you call this he his face looks like well, red he, like if his face turns red he's really like clenching his teeth and he just like Ugh. and then you like can, you, you can he's almost like he's overemphasizing what a cartoon character looks like that would be mad um and uh i think uh, the the really challenging part is that he sometimes still starts to hit uh, or kick, and um, yeah, there. I feel like it has evolved a lot from like the huge tantrums he used to throw when he was smaller. Um, but it still still happens. What feels like out of nowhere. And there is his eyes are about to explode with tears. Yeah, they get very like getting full and yeah. And how long? do these moments last he starts to get mad he scrunches all up and the emotions come out how long is he in that space i think it depends on if we leave him alone versus kind of try to help him regulate that that moment um i feel like when we leave him alone it could last i don't know actually i would say it it does it's rare that he gets over it by himself completely. So if you um, leave him alone, he'll just stay mad until it's time to go to bed. No. Well, but at least like 10, 15 minutes before then uh, we hear him throwing something and then like we'll have to intervene and c- go in um, okay. before he breaks something. Or unless I start getting mad, be- he will start getting longer because I start getting mad because he gets mad out of nothing. Um, Okay. So no reason. So then the mad is even more because I'm like, why are you mad? It's like, you're such a young kid and you just get mad out of anything. So I get Mm. mad and everyone is mad and longer mad. (laughs) Okay. So when you get mad, that is not a helpful response, which is really common across the board for most families that when one person is upset, 
anybody else getting upset doesn't help. So it's like adding fuel to the fire. Yes. And yet we're human. So sometimes that happens. So we can talk about ways to not do that. But I wonder, are there, what are the tools that you have that work when you intervene to support that helps? What does that look like? You did so, it this morning. Yeah. Like this morning, um, I, I asked him if he wants a hug and sometimes that's, that's enough to get him down when he hasn't kind of, when it hasn't escalated that much yet. Um, and when I ask him like, what can we do? He always uh, says to breathe because that's what we try to teach him often. And this morning he actually did it kind of by himself while sitting on my lap and that helped him kind of get down. Um, like there was, I feel like probably half a year or longer that I created this little poster with like nine things he can do when he gets mad. And uh, sometimes it would like, I would show it to him and sometimes it would work and he would pick something but often, like in that moment, like he's like nothing, nothing helps. And um, but I think sometimes yeah. the hug it really helps. The hugging or um, when I see that his eyes are like ready to burst in tears, I just put my hand so he can give it back to me his hand. So that helps a little yeah. bit because then I feel but I'm like okay. But I'm like, I don't want you to be mad at silly things. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, see, that is calms him down. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So what what it sounds like is that he has really big feelings. My guess is his happiness is just as big as his anger. But mm. we like what he does when he's happy better than what he does when he's angry. It's it's not as destructive or hurtful. And so part of the teaching that needs to happen is to share with him, what do you do when you're angry? How do you feel that feeling fully? Cause he's feeling it in his body, the way you describe, he moves it without it becoming destructive to people or objects or animals around him. And so I love that when it's in the beginning, you give him a hug. Cause when you described him kind of scrunching his face all up and it turning red, I could picture him wanting to be like, wrapped up in a blanket and just squeezed because the anger is creating a contraction in his body. So can we teach him almost to like go into it, right? When you're driving and there's ice, you're told to lean into the curve because it helps the car course correct. If he's feeling anger, can we have him lean into the anger and feel it so that it can move through and out? So giving him that big tight bear hug my guess is it allows him to kind of create a contraction that he can't do himself. So is there a way that you can kind of like squeeze him with cushions or wrap him really tight in a blanket like a burrito that are other ways for him to get that same feeling as a hug? So if you say, do you want a hug? And he says, no, like, okay, what about a burrito and wrap a blanket so that he has alternatives because while they create the same impact, they might not feel the same in the moment. The other thing that I love is that you've taught him to breathe and that he does it. And so those tools that you have been working with him to understand, even if he says, no, I don't want to, can you do the tools? Because Jan, you said he sits on your lap and he started breathing himself. Like he started taking a deep breath. What I wonder is if he's sitting on your lap at another time when he's really upset and really angry and nothing's going to help because that's how it feels. If you started taking big deep breaths and if he's sitting on your lap, he'll feel your chest breathe slow in and out. And often we end up in sync with somebody else's body when they are, when, when we're physically connected to them, right? It's why babies fall asleep on, on parents' chest because they can feel their heartbeat, they can feel the breath, and it helps them to regulate. Can you mm -hmm. regulate yourself to help him learn how to regulate? And I would name the tool. I would say, I'm going to take some deep breaths or I'm going to count to 10 out loud slowly to help me calm down. He doesn't want to use the tool because he's past a point where he can think clearly and come back from it. But if he feels you doing it, he may start matching your tenor 
and come down from that anger. Yeah, I've I've been doing that. It helps sometimes. Um, I want to say, but it's the the other times when he's becoming a little bit more aggressive with his anger and like kicking us and uh, like punching things, even kind of just to test us. Uh, it sometimes feels like not really, but just like keeps nudging us. Um, yeah. That's when I feel like. I don't, I don't have a tool. I don't like, I don't want to get hurt. Um, so we kind of have to just like hold him, which just makes it sometimes even worse. Yeah. So let's not contain it. What if we gave him somewhere to put that? If he wants to punch out, right there, there's a reason why so many adults do kickboxing or running. We, we need a place to put our ain- anger, our energy. Although adults, we don't usually think I'm going to kickboxing class because I'm angry, but we, <laughs> we are. Is there somewhere that he can kick or punch or move? I, I it, love when kids, if you have a strong wall in your house, right? Like a weight bearing wall, have kids go and c- can you move the wall? Push it as hard as you can. Go put all your anger into the wall. The wall can take it. Go, go, go. You can't really move the wall. Don't do it against a door that's going to open or anything like that. But can he put it in there? Can he, can he kick the couch? Can he punch a pillow? What are the objects in your house that he won't break? Right? Being four and a half, you have more options than if he was 10 or 15. So let's teach him this now. Can you get a punching bag? But a specific area where you say, this is the object where you put your anger. This is where it is safe to hit, to kick, to move your body the way you need to so that you get it out, right? Is there a tree in the backyard? Is there a, you know, a space that he can go run? Because if, if the feeling is in him, we want to let it out in a safe way. Yeah. I I feel like it's often directed at us. So getting him to not wanting to put his anger towards us is, has been almost impossible. And I think it, because it often starts with us telling him like to stop something or not do something. And um, yeah, it just feels like the anger is directed at us versus like anywhere else. And that's challenging. Ah, okay. Let me make sure I understand this. So you say something like, hey, time to stop watching TV and you go turn it off and then he gets really angry. And even if you say, do you want a hug or let's go punch a pillow he will punch you even if he has that other outlet because he's actually mad at you because you are the thing that delivered the disappointment, the heartache, the frustration. Mm-hmm. You created, you quote unquote, created the anger, even though you, you were even, just being a good parent. Yeah. And even if we tell him, look, you have like five more minutes and then we're going to, let's say, turn the television off um, at that moment when we do turn it off, it's still kind of the same the same type of uh, yeah situation where he directs his anger at us. He's angry at us. Okay, cool. So love that clarity because if you know it's going to happen, then we can talk about it and create a moment for him to feel that even before he knows he's mad. So you say five more minutes and the TV's going off and he goes, okay. And you go three more minutes, TV's going off. One more minute, TV's going off. Okay, TV's going off. Are you doing it or am I doing it? He ignores you because that's what kids do. And you say, okay, I'm going to do it. And you turn it off and you turn to him and you say, you know what? You might get really mad now that the TV's off. So give me your hands and we're going to do 10 big jumps to move our angry. And we're going to say, I'm mad. And you kind of do really big jumps. I'm mad. I'm mad. I'm mad. I'm mad. So you give him the words and the actions to feel his feelings before he even knows he's mad. Because you know you did something that's going to upset him. It's okay for him to be mad that the TV goes off. It's not okay for him to hit you because the TV goes off. I sometimes get mad when I have to turn my TV off and go to bed. But I'm a grown-up and I know the consequences when I don't. So we make choices. And it's not that what he's feeling is wrong or bad. It's how he's demonstrating that. So would that work? You think? Yeah, I, like for that situation, I'm I'm very excited to try that out. Awesome. Because I also feel like in in that moment it just could turn into laughter, so he never really gets really into that feeling. Yes, 
What it also does is it creates a moment of connection in a moment that is usually a disconnection, right? You're like, let's turn the TV off and move on to probably something he doesn't want to do. So when you say, hey, we're going to do this thing together, now he's feeling connected with you instead of that anger and you create a new pattern. So then it doesn't have to be, you know, a month from now, I'm mad, I'm mad, I'm mad, but it can be a, we're going to take a bath now, or we're going to brush our teeth now. And you can turn it into something playful once a new routine is set, because it might be that anger is his default, not a true feeling. He's gotten used to dad turns off the TV. I get mad as opposed to really being mad. We can change that feeling. Yeah, we can recode like it for a, Like a default of many things that he gets mad at anything or or the other day I was thinking that maybe because we're we're paying so much attention and telling him why are you getting mad at anything now it's like more and more I guess because we're what yeah, that tells me is he much. likes chatting with you he likes hearing from you he likes the conversation that you're having in those moments mm -hmm. which tells me two things one Cookie, you said before that sometimes you get mad when he's mad. Yes. So if when he's mad, you get mad and are like, why are you so mad? What yes. that tells me is that he likes that experience from you. He likes when you yell. <laughs> now, he doesn't want to be in trouble because nobody likes being in trouble, but he likes when you yell. So what I would recommend you try, not in that moment, but at another time, positive yelling. When he's sitting and playing beautifully, having an awesome time, you going over and you going, I can't believe you're sitting here playing Legos in such a great way. It's amazing. And I'll be like, oh, I like that. I like when mom yells. That's really funny. And he'll laugh and he'll giggle and you'll have this beautiful moment. Now, in the moments that he's angry and it's making you angry, how do you not yell then? That's the hard piece. And the truth is what I want you to think in your head is, what do I want Nika to learn to do when he's feeling what I'm currently feeling? So when he's angry, you don't want him to yell, which means when you're angry, you can't yell. It's logical. It's hard to do. But if we want him to change his behavior around his anger, we can start by modeling that. So you can say to him, I am feeling really angry right now. So I'm going to take deep breaths. I am feeling really angry right now. So I'm going to go ask dad for a hug because he, that hug helps me feel better. Even if it doesn't really help you feel better, it's modeling what we want him to do when he is angry. I'm feeling really angry now. So I'm going to go over to that bean bag and I'm going to kick it because that's going to help me because I can't help our family if I'm feeling really mad. And you say the word so that he sees and hears what you're doing and can understand. Maybe you say, I'm really mad, so I'm going to go in the kitchen and get some water. And you just walk away because you need something different. And because we're usually dehydrated and water helps us think better. We don't think clearly when we're angry. But if you create the model of this is what we want him to do when he's mad. Therefore, this is what I have to do when I'm mad. It will help the process along. Because otherwise, unfortunately, what he sees is, when mom's mad, this is what happens. This is the behavior that goes with that feeling. And therefore, this is the behavior that goes with my feeling too. It's really hard to do, but we also have to be willing to do the things that we are asking our children to do. You want Mika to learn to change his relationship with anger. You have yeah. to change your relationship with your anger. Okay. <laughs> Not easy, right? But impactful, really, really impactful. And maybe you have different tools that work for you that don't work for Mika. And that's okay. Because you can say, it helps me to have quiet time when I'm angry. So I'm going to go in my bedroom and be quiet by myself. <laughs> and they follow you. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, then, and then you can keep saying, I need alone. To, I need five minutes alone to navigate my anger. I need five minutes alone to navigate my anger. I don't want to yell. I'm trying to do this differently. So please let me have five minutes alone so I don't yell. 
Like say what you are feeling. I can feel my voice getting louder because I'm getting so frustrated and I can't get my alone time. I just need five minutes. I will set a timer. Please let me have five minutes to calm down. Okay. Because you can, you can name it. And when you start using your words, he'll see that and learn from it. But you got to do the other side of giving him that positive, intense yelling experience for doing good things because he's going to look for it. He wants that engagement. He wants to be connected. You pointed out something brilliant, which is the more you talk to him about it, the more he does it, which tells me he wants to talk to you. Find other things to talk to him about, other ways to connect. And I know that you both are amazing at playing with him. So we just have to look at what happens when he's angry and make sure you bring those behaviors in to when you're playing with him. Make sense? Yeah. 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 You know, it's one of those things. These are the conversations that really reinforce to me how some things around parenting are simple, but not easy. It's not easy to do this. It's not easy to feel our feelings in a different way and grow and change. But the strategies aren't as big and complex as we want to think they are. It's just challenging to do. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's exciting because if you spend, maybe it takes six months, maybe it takes a year for him to get these tools. But then you'd have a five and a half year old that knows how to talk about his feelings and his anger and feel them in a productive way, which would be awesome because then you don't have a 10 year old who's out of control with their anger. So I love when parents of little kids are like, okay, this is a challenge. How do we address it? What do we do here? So are there other pieces of his big feelings that you want to talk about or other pieces of something else that you want to touch base on? Well, talking about feelings and him getting a better vocabulary to also describe what's going on. uh, I'm curious if you have any advice on that, because when, like when we ask him how he feels, it's like happy, sad, and angry. Those are like the three feelings he feels. Um, Of course, there's many more nuances. And like, I feel like even for myself, getting that vocabulary is uh, has not been easy and I'm still working on it but is there a way how we can teach him that and like one of the things I'm also like sometimes he says I'm not feeling good and we we cannot get any more details um <laughs> like does something hurt uh are you sleepy are you hungry do you want to throw up like any other question is a no it's just like I don't feel good and we don't know what that means and I think based on the few times that he, that he said that sometimes it actually is that he's sleepy, but he doesn't want to admit it. Or other times it is that he's hungry, but he doesn't want to admit it, or he needs to go to the washroom. Like it's, <laughs> it's hard for us to get, uh, well, for him to, to share, um, on one end. And maybe it's, I don't know if it's because he doesn't know how to describe things or if there is something else going on. Yeah. Um, I love this question. I also find it really interesting that he can say, I don't, that he can acknowledge that he's not feeling good, but really doesn't have words to say beyond that. And so I think of the difference between talking about feelings and feeling our feelings. Our feelings actually are sensations in our body. When we're excited, like when I get excited, there is like a tingle on the back of my neck and the, and the back of my back that like I can feel it. My body does a particular thing when I'm excited. My body does a different thing when I'm tired and it does a different thing when I'm sad. The, the thing that's hard about emotions is sometimes we get confused. So sometimes I think I'm sad when I'm really just tired and need to go to bed because it's a close connection. So where I would start with him is checking in once a day, twice a day, three times a day, if you're having a really good day and ask him what his body feels like. So it's not just how are you feeling? And he says, I'm happy. And you're like, great. What does your body feel like? What's going on? And if, if you say, how are you feeling? And he says, I'm happy. You say, great. 
where do you feel that in your body? Do you feel it in your belly? It feels all warm and yummy. Do you feel it in your head? Is it a thought? Do you feel it in your feet? And he's going to look at you like you're a crazy person because he has no (laughs) idea what any of that means. And you're going to say, okay, let's try again. And think about your feet. Feel them. What do your feet feel like right now? What do your legs feel like right now? What does your belly feel like right now? What does your chest feel like right now? What do your arms feel like right now? What does your head feel like right now? So you teach him to become aware. And I would do that a little slower so he can actually answer each of those questions. But teaching him to really feel his body and connect what's happening with those sensations to the feeling. So you guys are sitting and you're all cozied up and you've been reading a book and it's really sweet and lovely moment. And he's like, my chest feels really warm. Maybe there's a color to it. Some people feel colors, right? So he might say, it feels like yellow. Okay, cool. There's no wrong answer. But then you can say, I wonder if that's what your body feels like when you feel cozy. So it becomes a pondering as opposed to this is what that feeling is. In moments when he is, when you know he's sleepy or you know he's hungry, do the same experience because then you can teach him, oh, yeah, look at how, you, how your body felt and we're about to have lunch. I bet that's how you feel in your body when you're hungry. Or, you know, do it right after he's been real angry. While he's angry, he probably won't do it with you. But right after, you can be like, oh, this is the remnants of feeling angry. Interesting. Okay. So he starts connecting the sensations that are going on in his body with the words but also just that check-in. We don't teach our kids to check in. We often don't even ask them how they're feeling unless they're feeling bad. If they're angry, if they're frustrated, if they're sad, if they're cranky, we're like, what? what's going on? How are you feeling? But when they're excited, we don't teach them to identify what that feels like in their body. Now, the cool part about this is once he's connected and can feel what's happening in his body for different emotions, you can start working with him on intentionally feeling certain things, right? So if when he's really excited, you know, for me, it's like this tingling in the back of my neck and my upper back. I can try, can't always do it, but I can be like, I want to feel excited. Can I, can I make that tingle happen? Can I think my way into that feeling? Because we can. Now, can we do it every single moment at every single time? No. If I'm really angry about something, I can't get myself excited like that. I wish it could. That'd be great. But we can start to shift, right? If, if I'm really scared of something and I feel that pit in my stomach and I, I get nauseous personally when I'm, when I'm worried, when I'm scared about something, I can be like, okay, can I bring, can I just breathe into my belly and let go of that feeling? Can I just let go of that sensation? And sometimes I can't completely let it go, but I can lessen it. I can shift it. I can bring something else in. And so it's kind of, you know, a a first and then a second, but first he has to figure out how to feel his body. And then you can help him learn how to move and change it, right? The, The easiest example that I can think of after giving you all of those words is when we think about for adults, when we're feeling depressed, we usually have hunched shoulders. We're usually leaning down. We're looking down. And if you are someone who feels that a lot and notice that your body does that a lot, sit up tall, lift your head up and your physical change creates a chemical change that creates an emotional change. Similar concept here. So that was a lot of words and different ways of explaining it, but does that give you some idea of how to talk to him about how to feel his feelings and how to bring awareness to his feelings? Because the truth is, all of our feelings are great as long as we allow ourselves to feel them in productive, useful ways. Anger, the other side of that is passion. We just don't want it to be destructive, which is sometimes what he's doing right now. So you got to teach him how to, how to do it better. But how does all of this kind of teaching concept sit with you or questions about it? I'm I'm excited to try this out. Um, 
not only for him to learn it, but also for myself. Because I feel like I'm not checking in with myself uh, mm -hmm. enough to even understand how I'm feeling. So it's maybe going to be something that all three of us can learn together. Yes. Yeah, especially the anger part, <laughs> which I have to work yeah. a bit more. Mm -hmm. Now, now with Mika, of course. I have to do something more for myself too. Yeah. Even yeah, because before having Mika I didn't have this anger, but after he born it's like, oh I'm uh, quite angry. Didn't know that this is existed. <laughs> mm hmm What I what I wonder is if this has all been since you've become a mom, if it's more like mama bear energy, that it's protective, that it's you're seeing your son, the most precious thing in the world to you, hurt and hurting, and you just want to fix it and you don't know how, so it makes you angry, right? That I wonder if it's actually compassion underneath. And if you give yourself permission to see it as an asset as a mom, that you have to shift the way you demonstrate in the world, it might be easier to shift rather than all of those other feelings we sometimes feel when we're like, we shouldn't feel this anger. No, you should. You're being protective. Um, I also love the idea that you're all going to learn it together and do check-ins because the other piece I wonder is if sometimes you, as parents, you are frustrated or quick or yelling at Mika because you had a big day because you're having some other feeling because you're actually not feeling well yourself. And that if something is happening and you do a self check-in and you're like, well, oh, actually I'm feeling really stressed. Yeah. Okay. Well now I'm aware of that. So I can be more intentional with my parenting rather than if you didn't notice that you were stressed, you know, it's going to be a quick switch for you to fall into anger. Whereas if you're aware of it, it's a longer road. And I love that you get, are going to get to learn it side by side with Mika so he can learn that, oh, yeah, we're going to do this together. It's not that I'm doing something wrong and have to change. We all are going to learn and change, which will be awesome. Yeah, I think demonstrating it for him, like us checking in with each other or with ourselves, might be a great way for him to pick it up. Yep. And then wanting to participate rather than if we just put him on the spot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If it becomes a normal family conversation that happens all the time, it's just a skill he will gain like anything else, right? Which is exactly how we want feelings to be for our kids. But somehow we live in a world that doesn't create the space for feelings in the same way we create space for learning to read or learning to do math. But that's kind of what this is. This is like his feelings homework mm -hmm. for everybody. All right. We could chat about feelings all day because they're so fun and so connected to behavior and there's so much to explore. But instead, we're going to wrap up. And if there is one takeaway that you're going to make sure you put in place, what's your one takeaway? I'll, I'll share mine and then... Okay. Um, for me, it's in those situations where we know he's going to get mad to almost like intercept it and actually purposefully uh, have that moment with him rather than knowing it's going to happen and then getting upset that it did happen, although we expected it and it becoming a much bigger, bigger thing than it should be. Yes. Be. Love that one. Awesome. I'm excited to hear how that works. And Cookie, what's when your what's your one takeaway? Um my takeaway with me guys, um and for me too, that I really have to learn that he's learning. Because he's so new to all of this and I already had gone through a lot of my life. So I, yeah, he's, he's learning and I have to be aware of that. I, he's learning and to teach him, um, 
what to do with all his feelings. Yeah. Give him a good example and not get so frustrated and overwhelmed and mad at him because he's he's just four years. He's still little and learning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love both of your takeaways. But that reminder that he's still figuring out how to be a human. Yes. yes. Will go so, so far. Thank you both for coming and chatting and sharing so openly about your family. It has been so much fun chatting with you about all the big feelings. And I'm excited to hear how this shifts and changes things for your family. No problem. Thank you so much for the invite. Yeah, thank (laughs) you. We'll keep you updated. Fantastic. And thank you for listening. I know your time is precious and limited. I'm grateful that you shared it with us today. What's your one takeaway? Just one small step can make a big difference. Make sure you know when new episodes come out by subscribing here and joining my mailing list at drmarcy.com backslash podcast. Do you want to be a guest on a future episode of Love Your Family again and again and again and again? Then go to drmarcy.com backslash podcast guest and let me know. Finally, do you need individualized help for your family? Then go to drmarcy.com backslash contact and connect with my team to learn how we can help you. Remember, blue skies are ahead and we're going to get there together.